Hey guys, Gramophone here. Um, you guys have been asking me for uh, a little review of my kit and a tour or whatever. So I uh, thought I'd comply and show you guys exactly what I'm using and uh, how I use it. Hopefully it'll give you guys some insight and maybe help you with your own drum covers. Or just if you're curious and want to stop by, then uh, enjoy. First things first, we've got uh, the kit. Uh, it's a Tama Hyperdrive. Uh, superstar kit. See right in there, maybe a little fuzzy. My autofocus doesn't really work while I'm shooting uh, video. But uh, yeah, it's in this awesome uh, oyster red uh, wrap, birch shells. Sounds fantastic. It's got 10, 12 up on top, and then 14, 16 floors for the hyperdrive sizes so they're a little more shallow. Can't remember the exact sizes, but I think this guy's a six and a half and the twelve is a seven. And then it's uh, fourteen by eleven and sixteen by twelve. Don't quote me on those sizes because uh, I honestly can't remember. Um, right now I'm using the uh, snare that comes with the kit. It's uh, fantastic. It's uh, five by fourteen. Five and a half by 14. I can't remember the depth. I don't know, I just don't know. Um, yeah, right now I'm using a coated G2 on it. I change it up sometimes uh, across all the toms. The four toms are uh, clear G2s, but they're getting a little uh, battered after a change. I'm probably going to do something coated on them, just give them a little more uh, warmth. Uh, I got a, uh, an EQ4 batter on the kick with a couple of uh, Slam pads, the Evan slam pads that I uh, cut in half and put them uh, right where the beater strikes just because I like how it sounds and how durable it is. Uh, I got a pillow inside for muffling. Uh, on the front I've got an EQ4 resonant, I'm pretty sure. Uh, let me just take a look here. Oh, EQ3 resonant. Same thing. Ported. Got a ring in it. Whatever. Does what it does. What it does. Uh, symbols. Got a 17 inch AA explosion crash. Really love this thing. Uh, over here is a 12 inch Wuhan. It's very cheap, but they sound fantastic. Uh, this guy, I've taken the uh, logo off as some of my other symbols you'll see, like my ride and whatever, don't have, or even my hats here, don't have logos on them. Uh, it's just because I cleaned them one day and logos started coming off, so I figured I'd take the whole thing off. So this is a 7-inch uh, HHX uh, Evolution Splash, Dave Weckl model series. Uh, it's a 10-inch UFIP Class Series Splash. I just got an email. Uh, my bell here is an 8-inch Medium Bell by Meinl. I love this thing. It's uh, got a lot of sustain. I mean, that thing goes on forever. Above that, it's got the 17-inch uh, Stage Crash, AAX again. Uh, underneath that, we've got a Pisces Bell Accent 8 inch. Uh, these, the red models, are the newer ones. I have a, have a black um, a black logo model that you can't get anymore. It was part of the uh, Symphonic series, but uh, yeah, they don't make them like that anymore. So uh, over for my X-Hats, a uh, pair of 10-inch UFIP class series. Uh, got some uh, vents in the bottom. Oh, sorry, they're not 10-inch, they're 12-inch. Uh, it's really nice and bright. If I'm playing like drum and bass or something, I'll use them as mains. Or if I'm doing like a uh, funk or hip-hop, I'll use them as mains as well. But uh, for this stuff, I use them as X-Hats. This guy's a 20-inch. Uh, Z Custom, Zildjian Z Custom uh, Medium Ride, I do believe. Uh, logo has been long gone on that. I love the bell on this thing. It's uh, one of the first rides I got when I was, uh, I was 18. No, I was 16 when I got that. I had some crashes that I bought with it as well. With it as well. If you notice here, you can see it's got the old school um, hammering on it. Whereas the new one is a, is a, goes sort of out like that. It doesn't radiate on a spiral like this. Uh, those, those new ones I really don't like, which is why I have a bunch of savings here. Next up on the list is 18-inch uh, stage crash. 
is the one I hammer the hell out of. Um, if you look, actually, it's bent a little bit. But uh, this thing takes a beating. Hasn't cracked on me yet. Uh, over here, 16-inch Wuhan China. Oh. Stepped on a cable there. Had my overhead fall on me. Yeah, 16-inch Wuhan China. Uh, again, these things are super cheap. I uh, love the way they sound. They're very short to the point. Very little sustain. Uh, great accents. Uh, for pedals, got the uh, very old school eliminators. Had these things for uh, nine or ten years now. They're very beat up, but uh, very well taken care of. I uh, I tune them up every maybe six months or so. Take them all apart, oil everything, put it back together, nice and smooth. But the, uh, the belt drive on there, black hands. For those of you interested. Uh, right, hi hats. I didn't do these guys. These are uh, 14 inch. Uh, uh, AA rock hats. Uh, I used to invert them. I'd put the bottom on the top. Gives a little more uh, definition for sticking stuff, but for, for wide open washy stuff, I just stick to the normal configuration. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to mention that the uh, these guys are a regular finish. Same thing with the 17-inch uh, stage crash and the 18-inch stage crash. Um, the only reason I got this one in a brilliant finish is because it's the only way they make them. Um, I personally prefer the uh, raw finish or the or the, the unbuffed finish just because I find they're actually a little brighter. Um, they still got a lot of the, uh, the the lathing marks in them and um, they just have a little more bite to them I find. Uh, guys want to see my recording rig? I guess so. Uh, so up here I've got uh, Audio Technica AT3525. Got a pair of them for overheads. Um, on the toms, got PG-56s for the first two on the first floor. And over here is a, a Sennheiser E85, 835 rather. Um, on the snare, I don't know, can't focus on that that far. So it's an E609, another Sennheiser thing. Um, Inside here, side snare. Sometimes I mic underneath, sometimes I mic on the side, sometimes I mic over in the front here. Uh, it really just depends on my mood and what kind of sound I'm looking to get. Uh, but on the side right now, I have an AT2020. On the hat, I have an AT2021. Uh, in front of the bass drum, I got a quick walk around here. In front of the bass drum, see I have another uh, 609. Gives me a bit of, more of uh, oomph. I guess is the best way to describe it. It uh, you just blend it in with the, the signal of the main kick that's in there, which is a, uh, a PG52, um, and that works for me just fine. I don't know if you guys can see in there. I've got it sort of facing off on the side, so it's aiming sort of there. If you're looking at the the bass drum, it's not dead center. It's it's aimed just off the side, so you're not getting all the uh, all the attacks from the beater just right into the uh, right into the face of the mic. I find that way it gives it a little more of uh, a little more, not necessarily boominess, but um, it does it doesn't make it so uh, uncontrollable. Um, oh, and uh, last but not least, I have a room mic over here. It's uh, an old Electro Voice 635A. Uh, I use that an Omni mic. I use that literally as just dangling on the side of a bass cab. Um, why? Because I squash the hell out of it and then I put it in the mix. So another one of those things I sort of blend, like the, the bass drum right there. I just blend it in, and uh, I really like the way it sounds because of this sort of a trashy quality. Uh, I also almost forgot on the ride here is there's uh, a really cool Russian mic made by Octava, Octavia, however you prefer to pronounce that for Octava. Um, it is an MK319. It's uh, right now it's unmodded. I plan on modifying it uh, in the very near future. So I'm going to use it for vocals and acoustic guitar and things like that. And I've heard uh, I've heard that it modified and it sounds fantastic. So get your hands on one of those. Be sure to modify it. As it is stock, it's got some boininess if you happen to hit the uh, hit the body of the mic with something. 
And if you nudge it or you just, you know, tap the stand or something like that, you'll hear a big boing. It's not very well uh, isolated in there. But uh, Michael Jolly does a fantastic job of putting some of this stuff in it. So it's worth the money to put it in. Um, so over for interfaces, it's got a, an old 2006 MacBook running uh, Logic Pro. Um, up here I've got, uh, in the rack here, I've got a uh, Steinberg, basically made by Yamaha, the MR816X. I've got that running light pipe. Up here, got that running light pipe into M Audio Project Mix IO. Um, on this guy, on the MRA 16, I run all the, the, the big transient stuff so that'll be like uh, palms, hair, and cake and stuff like that. And I've got all the pads lit up, um, a couple fan of power like for the side, uh, side snare and the hi hat. Um, and up here, I've got the overhead room mic and uh, the ride, I do believe. So uh, I really I really dig this. I, got, I picked this up uh, a few months ago. Very nice. It's uh, very convenient. You wanna do a fast mix on the fly. You know, you've got all your transfer controls. You've got a shuttle here. You've got a jog dial. Uh, you got eight motorized faders and go through the banks. And uh, they're really responsive. Um, so I think that's about it. I've got some lights up here, blind you guys a little bit. And my room is filthy right now. The other band that normally shares the space with us uh, is in the studio right now recording some stuff. And uh, not necessarily saying it's their fault because a lot of this mess is mine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's messy. So I apologize for the mess. Um, so yeah, I think that that is it. Thanks for uh, watching my drum tour. Hope this uh, gave you a little insight to what I do and uh, what I use rather. Uh, if you have any more questions, comment, leave a comment, or send me a message on YouTube. Uh, I'm there often enough. I'll check it out and, uh, and I'll get back to you uh, whenever I can. So, uh, yeah, thanks again. Peace.